Hi there, Ellen. How are you? Hello. Hello. I'm good. How are Please. you? I'm good. Did I? Can you? How do I pronounce your last name? Oh, it's Knudsen. 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 Well, welcome. Thank you for being here. I I appreciate you um jumping on and um, chatting with us about your new publication, which we will definitely get to. Why don't you? That's just kind of your paper resume. Why don't you um let us know how you got how you went from graphic design to book arts and how kind of long journey for you started. Well, it's true. I started in graphic design and in, it was actually in college at North Carolina State University that I saw letterpress printing for the first time. I just saw like an example at, a, at an exhibition and I thought, I'm doing that. No matter what happens, I'm going to do that. Um, and so <laughs> I didn't know how. I had no idea. I didn't know what it was. I'd never seen letterpress printing before. And it was printed. The printing was on handmade paper and it was just beautiful. And I was mm -hmm. determined to do that. And so then uh, a few years later, you know, I got married and we ended up moving to Chicago. And mm -hmm. I took letterpress printing classes and book arts classes at Columbia College. Uh, there was a book arts right. program there that just recently within the past few years closed and they don't have it mm -hmm. anymore. Um, right. But that's where I learned initially letterpress. Um, and then as far as books, I mean, I guess I really was making books for a long time. Like I would make single. Now I make additions. So I make multiples, usually at least 20 of most things and usually more like 50 of the edition. Uh, but I was making books by hand using like rub on type and stencils and, temp, you know, transfer tape and whatever I could find really. Um, so I did that for a long time. I didn't know that book arts was a thing that you could do. Um, and so when I discovered that, I was like, this is perfect. I was already doing that. I didn't know it was a thing, but. You didn't know it was even yeah. a thing. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, so I didn't know how to do it right. You know what I mean? Like I didn't do, I didn't know the how you sew things together. So I just did it however I could figure out. Oh, that's really interesting. Do you think that was helpful when you actually came to take the formal training at, you know, what, what, well, um, was it Alabama was your first formal training? Or, or I presume you took some other classes too, right? It was at Columbia. That's yeah. where I oh, learned. Oh, Columbia was the first time. Yeah. yeah. But that wasn't for a degree. I was just kind of taking community classes. Hmm, Although they sure. did let me take classes with the grad students and stuff. I don't know why they let yeah. me do that. Mm -hmm. Um. That's so okay. I did learn. And then I realized how I was doing things. It wasn't, it, it's not as functionally strong. That's really what it is. It's the way that I was sewing things together. Gotcha. Wasn't, it, it worked. Yeah. It just wasn't functionally correct. Yeah. You know, it, and, and even like stylistically, just how it looked, it didn't look as good as the, you know, traditional yeah. ways are. Yeah. Right. So yeah, Don't I learned you think a lot. It was helpful. Yeah, do you think it's helpful though in some ways just to kind of feel around it first? What was helpful was having done books. So it really didn't matter, yeah. I would say, that I was doing it wrong. Who cares? You know, I was doing it. Right. And so I kind of yeah. understood things about how to structure a book, how to put it together, even though the technical yeah. sewing might not be the right stitch or whatever it was. Um, yeah. Yeah, That's I do think it it's was, almost like I don't know if I would call it helpful, but I definitely knew knew a little bit more because I had dabbled yeah. in it just on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. So at that point, I guess you were concentrating more on the, what was going into it than doing it correctly, as it were. That's right. Uh, yeah. It's almost like the binding was an it, not an afterthought, but sort of an afterthought. I, I was like, well, somehow I'll get this together. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the yeah. end. And yeah, the binding was in service of what you were trying to say. That's right. Kind of thing. Huh. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. Huh. Yeah. Um, do you think your work changed a lot once you started to take formal classes? Like, how do you? Uh, yes. Just, were they just because I planned it? it. I, I was, planned. I planned it more yeah. because I yeah. had to, because I was going to let her press print it. So gotcha. I, it wasn't like I'm just going to wing it, which I actually think you can do. I just mm. felt like I could. I needed to plan. I needed to know what I was going to do when I went into the press because it wasn't my press and I only had a limited amount of time. You know, there were all these things behind the reasons, but I really feel like yeah. the planning was very different. And because I was making an addition, you right. know, I wasn't just making one book. 
So that. So was when did you different. make that transition then from doing those two editions? Like, um, right. was that just because of the letterpress aspect of it? Yes. I mean, that really is the reason. Because I thought, yeah. well, I'm not going to just print one of these. So I did, you know, the first time I made an edition, I made 12 books. Right. What a random number, but I don't know. That's how many books cool. I made. I don't know. I had, that's how much paper I had, you know, it was like that. <laughs> that's so I could do funny. that. Yeah. Um, so there wasn't a great reason, but yeah, that's why I did that. Yeah. Do you, now, do you still just work in editions or do you now, do you occasionally do one-offs or is it really all editions now? Sometimes I'll do a single book. Um, like I've done tunnel books that way. Um, sure. Yeah. I've made just a couple of tunnel books and I've done those and put them in exhibitions and things. They've gone, you know, but, and I did it the same way that I used to do that. That was so fun. Actually, recently I did that a couple of years ago where I used the transfer type and that rub on type that that's how you, people used to do typography in graphic design was rub on type. Yeah. But I made a book with that and yeah, uh, with that and some stencil, same, same way I used to do it. And so huh. it's so fun to do it's because you don't have to work. It, it's very freeing in a way mm. compared to making an edition where there is so much planning and you really have to, you know, work it all yeah. out and then make it. So like right. almost the production side becomes a job and it, it is uh, a job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <drag>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's interesting though, that a couple of years ago, you just went back to your roots. I kind of find it fascinating that you just, right. you had. Well, yeah. I never went away with it. I, re I never went away from it. Cause when I make, when I'm designing a book, that's mm -hmm. what I do is I do it that old way with stencils and with trying to figure out how the imagery is going to work and things like that. I do singles, but it's not, that's not the finished book, um, you know, anymore mm. because I'm going to make an edition of 50 or whatever it is, but I definitely uh, do it. Huh, I I'm still do it. And that's the fun. That's the fun part is designing it. Huh? Interesting. Oh, that's really cool. Huh? Well, talk, yeah. do you want to talk to us a little bit about, um, the kind of themes that you like to explore in your books um, and the sort of imagery you like to use um, and sort of different, you know, uh, whether that's different now from what it was, I don't know how many years ago, we won't even say. Um, has that evolved? But what kind of themes, <laughs> you know, is there a theme that kind of goes throughout your body of work or has it kind of gone in seasons? Um, what I make my work about depends on what I'm frustrated with at the time. I really make my books about issues and things in my life that might be bigger than me. They might be sort of politically driven, not all the time, but you know, it seems like everything these days is or can be. But when I get frustrated with some topic I, I, that I'm thinking about all the time, that's usually what I'll make a book about. I actually brought some of my books to show like, I could show them like this if you want me to do that. Yes, please. That okay. would be great. Yeah, please. Well, this this book is called um, Wild Girls Redux, an Operator's Manual. This is based on the first book I ever letterpress printed. I don't have, well, I have one, but it's buried somewhere. But this is a like a redux or a redo of that book. And it's Wild Girls. So this is like flocked paper so it looks like velour and then so this imagery is based on really feminist issues about how women are treated and all of the text is from a, mo a motorcycle maintenance book it's like the minnesota i think it is it's in the colophon but it's all these rules about how to ride and drive a motorcycle and i applied them to um women wear the right gear become familiar with the equipment and so this imagery is very much based on these are pinups so i won't go through every page but you kind of get an idea this is these are all on my website too if you want to look at them of course it's more fun to look at them with your hands and so i used things that were not traditional book binding materials this is the first book i did after graduate school and so I was like, 
kind of rebelling from <laughs> using traditional materials and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a accordion with two pamphlets sewn in like this. So that's the way it works. Wow. Works. Nice. Yeah. How did, is that letterpress, that flocked paper? It it is letterpress. Everything's letterpress printed. That's how I make all of my books. It's letterpress. Okay. Wow. So yeah. That's it. now. But any reason for the motorcycle? Do, do you ride a motorcycle, <laughs> or did you ride? I a don't. Motorcycle? I. No. But I was thinking about the first book I had done was a book of rules mm -hmm. uh, for women, and or for, not really for women, but I thought you could apply them. And mm. so this was. Um, let me read it. It's the Missouri Department of Revenue Motorcycle Operator Manual. I don't know how I came across that. I was just doodling around on the internet. I think, yeah. and I found this, and I thought that's perfect for this book. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's why I that, did that. That's and, great. But I mm. wanted to show you this because it's so different. So that the way that looks is one way, and then like this is my thesis project from grad school, and it's very different. Mm -hmm. This is a dosi do, -si -do mm. structure, which is the two sided. Mm -hmm. This is it's, people call it different things. But this has very yeah. traditional materials. That's handmade paper. And so you see how mm. formal that is and how mm. kind of quiet. And this was this book is a, based on a drive that I took back and forth between Starkville, Mississippi and Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which is where I went to graduate school. So it was a 90 minute drive every way, uh, both Ooh. ways. Wow. And so I would I had a kid and. I was driving back and forth to graduate school, and this is sort of the imagery that was on that drive. Huh. Interesting. For like so a two lot of years? It is for two years, for three years, but two for classes three. and then one more year. Yeah. And so it's mm. much different in style because really yeah. I think about the content and then that mm -hmm. motivates me as far gotcha. as the imagery. Yeah. So those are linoleum reduction prints nice i love the way they fold out that's great yeah i have a lot of fold outs in my books i just like really? for the, it not to just be the edge of the page i like for it to open up larger mm. yeah so yeah. it really depends on the point of showing this really is that it depends on what the book is about that how it's going to look mm. so for me like yeah. here's another fold out this is really nice. an image from that drive because there was a lot of flat mm. open land in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, what a contrast between those two books. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's interesting. So essentially you, you the the themes and what motivates you you know in whatever book you're working on is what is currently going on in your life or what you're frustrated with or reaction to mm -hmm. something either political or personal. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious, how, how did your, um, <laughs> how was your creative life during the pandemic? <laughs> like, did you find you were super creative or did you find it tough to make anything? It was hard. Um, I was not one of those people who was like, oh, great. Now I have all this. Well, in my mind, I thought, oh, I'll have all this time to do things. Right. And then it was like, nah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. Probably people understand that. And you may yeah. even yourself relate to that. Just blah. malaise. malaise yeah, yeah, it's blah. And yeah. so I did, I actually did finish a book. Um, I forgot, mm -hmm. I didn't bring that one out here, but um, it's on my website. It's called Rule of Thumb. And it's actually Ooh. about social media. Oh, um, really? And how I, I feel that social media has become like the, um, gladiator tournaments where people decide with a thumbs up or thumbs down, who's going to live and who's going to die. Um, huh. I'm, yeah. And so I'm this thumb idea is what drove that book and this idea of the crowd mm. and the mob and all of those things. And so that's yeah. what the book is about, but it's very formal and it's a movable book. So it has pop-ups and doors and different things. And Ooh. so I did do that book during the pandemic, but it was really a two year process because right. I had started it in 2019 and I just finished it earlier this year because right. it was like two steps forward, one step back repeatedly. Yeah. So, but I did move forward. So I just kept telling myself, <laughs> yeah. you did it. You did something yeah. today. So, you know, 
Well, it was That's tough. I, I think I think a lot of people really struggled. Like I, you know, mm -hmm. on one on the one hand, oh, we have all this time to be at home. And on the other hand, you know, there's so much like stress and worry. I think people had, yeah, that was taking up so much space in their head. They weren't able to be creative, but I some think so were. too. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Props to those people. But I, I wasn't, I, I mean, I did do things. So it might look like in the end that, oh yeah, you worked so hard. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I hardly worked. Yeah. <laughs> is what I did. Hard, it, yeah. But what yeah. you did do was like, it was tough going. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely was like I was thinking about it last night. What is a word to describe it? And it's molasses. That's what it felt like. Yes. It's walking through molasses, just like oh, yeah. one step forward, but it's so hard, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. hopefully, well, you know, we'll be through it at some point. I don't really know when, but we will be. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I recently know. I've felt a little bit better. Like I feel like Good. maybe the horizon is there somewhere. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, did you continue to teach during the pandemic? I did. Yeah. Uh, I taught uh, online. How was that? How did you find it? I, I prefer teaching live. Yeah. It's do it's very, you know, you can do it. It's doable. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's not my preference. Um, right. and I'm sure it wasn't anyone's preference. That's sort of obvious, right. but yeah. Um, I made it's kind of like this the work. You know, I made it through it and that we did mm -hmm. it. But it was yeah. not what yeah. I would prefer. Yeah. <laughs> talk to me. Talk to me a little bit about teaching. Do you because some some working artists love to teach and they love to, um, yeah, you know, it's a big part of their practice teaching. Or others, it's just mm -hmm. kind of a practical way of life. Like, do you love to teach, and or is it just kind of part of? Uh, sort of some days I love it, and some days I don't. But I yeah. would say generally. Yes, I do enjoy it because yeah. it, it actually stimulates my own work a little bit, mm. kind of keeps me engaged where I don't know if I would stay as engaged or maybe I, I don't really know how it affects my work, but I feel like it does. I feel like because I teach things, sometimes I'll experiment with things in class that I maybe wouldn't do if I wasn't showing somebody mm. else how to do it. Um, so, right. yeah, I, I, like, I like it. Like well, talking mm -hmm. of teaching, um, I was, um, I wanted to ask you about your book because um, mm -hmm. this really, well, we call it a book. I guess we do. I call it a publication, I guess. It's publication. Your... <laughs> publication. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, it's upside down. Um, because this, you mentioned on your website, this really is sort of, meant to be used as a manual perhaps for other teachers. So could you talk to us about how this came about and kind of what your intention yeah. for it was? This book is definitely a, an outcome of my teaching. It's 100% mm. an outcome of my teaching because all of these drawings that I did were for my students, were things that I did for my students to explain mm. And so that they could use them as reference later. And I also do it for myself so that I can sort of understand the steps and understand what parts, mm -hmm. like, like here where I sh show the parts for making a drum leaf book. My students really mm. like knowing what they need to make. It's kind of like a list of ingredients. And then I'm kind of showing mm. how to put this thing together. Um, yeah. So that's what it is. That's where it came from is, and this is over years. I've, I've taught at University of Florida for 12 years. And I would mm. say that's 10 years of drawings just accumulated wow. over the years in different, different structures that come up and, and I work on it. And some of them are harder, like a tunnel. Illustrating the tunnel book was a lot of work, mm. a lot of little pieces to draw. Yeah. But, so this yeah, is, I actually love doing that. This is hand, these are all hand drawn then? Like how They're did drawn you in Illustrator. It? They're drawn oh, okay, in gotcha. Adobe Illustrator. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sometimes I would good. even take a picture of um, the, the structure and then yeah. draw, put it in the Illustrator and draw on top of it. Mm. So I did nice. do that sometimes. Sometimes I didn't need to, but like for the hexaflexagon mm. and for the, um, the pop-up map, I definitely did that. Yeah, nice. this one, the pop-up map. 
that drawing yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, is, that's uh, complicated. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I had to, all those little angles, I couldn't draw that from my memory. So I took a picture sure. of it. Nice. Yeah. I got so surprised with the size. It was 11 mm-hmm. by 17. Is that how big it is? It is like 10 by 15. Oh, 10 by 15. Okay. Folded. Yeah. Yeah. yeah folded size. Yeah, folded. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. But I, yeah, because when it came in the mail, I was like, oh, it's huge. I didn't realize <laughs> how big it was going to be. But it's it's an amazing piece of work. Um, and it's a, li- a limited edition, right? Right. There's 200 in the edition. Um, right. But yeah. And I did it with a uh, newspaper club is the name of the publisher. Yeah. They are in the UK. Um, mm-hmm. I think, I, I think they're in England, but, but then one of their addresses is Glasgow. So I don't know where mm-hmm. they are exactly, but, um, they were wonderful mm. to work with. I highly recommend that for whatever they have all different sizes yeah. that you can do. And it's very quick turnaround and good quality. And Yeah. Yeah. Was this a pandemic project for you or is this just something in your mind for years to, to do? Well, I've sort of been working on it and try when I first laid these out, I had these long, they were big because I like the big size. That was intentional to keep it big like that because I feel like it's easier to see and look at the details mm-hmm. and look at how these things go together. So that I wanted that big size. But when I first laid them out, I had them in these long strips, kind of like something that might get hung up in a classroom. You know, like in a like an elementary school, they'll hang up some yeah. informational poster yeah. or whatever. That's what I sort of envisioned for it. Um, and so then I had to figure oh, out. Cool. So I've had the drawings for a while, and I then I'd add to them, like, oh, let me do a Volvel, let me do a hex flex. Sometimes people would ask me if I had one, a, a PDF or mm. whatever for it. And so I'd end up mm. drawing something else. And so. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it was a pandemic. Is that when I was working on it? I guess I did. Like sometimes in the <laughs> evening when I didn't want to be standing in the studio, I would work on this because I did yeah. have to figure out how to size things and how to fit them to that this size mm. and how to because I told, like I said, it was in that long strip, and it's like, how yeah. am I going to get these to fit on a on a folded pages without crossing yeah. the gutter? I, I was very, I just didn't want it to cross the gutter mm. ever. Cause it's, it's not sewn together because yeah. it's a newspaper. I really didn't want that to happen. So, yeah. Huh. Yes, it, it, that's what it's like. It's like a newspaper. Like a, yeah. It's like reading the newspaper. But a very mm-hmm. beautiful news. Like a well, yeah, newspaper and that's you can open blocked. it flat. Yeah. Thank you. It's yeah. really lovely. Yeah. I love it, it's too. It's really lovely. It's exciting to me. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry. Yes. I Well, let's, yeah, I'm going to get distracted now. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the book. Yeah, I know, right? I'm like, oh, I'm going to go make a book now. Um, do you have any <laughs> of, your, of your artist books with you that you'd like to share with us? Because yeah. I know that folks would love to have a, um, a look. I do. I brought a oh, couple out. Excellent. Um, this, one, this one is called Subject, Verb, Object. So this is another mm-hmm. one that stemmed from frustration. This is a, mm-hmm. I was feeling frustrated with academia, to be honest. Um, Sometimes I feel like the world of academia is exclusive. And sometimes I think the word exclusive is perceived as positive and it's not. To exclude other people is not positive. And so I made a Volvel mm. that has all these words on it that you can connect. And it's really about having or, or learning to control your desires, which is something you can't do. Um, mm. And so I feel like there's this needless energy expended towards trying to do that. I'm not sure exactly what that has to do with academia, but I felt this is what happened. This is what happened when I made the book. And then there's this other side that has like a matrix of hugs and kisses because like, as though you could, you know, regiment that, that relationship. So it's like the size of a record. Yeah. Um, that's real. I love that Vauvel. That's really another interesting. big book. Yeah, <laughs> I like to make a big book. <laughs> what is that? It's like, it looks like eighteen by eighteen, maybe. It looks huge. No, yeah. it's twelve. It's twelve by the, the circle is twelve inches. There's oh, it is. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, and it's like yeah. a record, and so yeah. the, this is like thirteen by thirteen. The the yeah. folder, but that's a big piece of paper to glue. Yeah, and a I big can piece imagine. of book cloth. Yeah. 
because this is book cloth on the outside and oh, then wow. Marillo paper on the inside for the folder. Is it a hard cover on the outside then? Or it's, no, soft? It's, it's soft, but it's a stiff because yeah, this Marillo cool. paper is very pretty heavy. Huh. But then nice. there's book cloth. And so that doubles the thickness there. So it's, it's a stiff, but it is flexible. It's not a board yeah. in there. Yeah. Huh. That's, I love that. Nice. And Very then cool. another one I brought out, this is probably, if I have a favorite book of mine, this is probably it. It's called Ingress Egress, which is an entrance and exit. Mm -hmm. This one is not from frustration. This book is not about that. So the way this is, it's like a little clamshell that opens to a paper wrapper and inside mm. is the book. So this is a book about artist books. And so I mm. came up with this system. This is for really from my graphic design roots. Yeah. So I'm going to open it. I can't open it and hold it and I'll mm -hmm. take the books out. There's six um, little French folds. Mm. So these are, there are six books here and they're made from, uh, mulberry paper so they're very thin i'll just mm. hold one at a time yeah so you can probably see that you can yeah. see through that i wish i could hold it in front but you can yeah, see you can. through you... to the yeah, yeah it's very transparent mm. i can really see it because i'm holding it up to the screen and it's light coming through it which is really gotcha. the point of it but yeah. i came up with this system it's very like Bauhaus driven as far as the typography so there's you know in the same spot in all of them is the it's numbered one through six and yeah. then on the side here you see books are oh it's on this side. books are architecture and so yep. then each what they are goes down and the lines change and so when you lay them all together you can see all those details wow nice. so so the books are architecture books mm -hmm. are collections mm-hmm I was just thinking about books and how they work and books are environments. Mm, yeah. So that one's sort of about the weather of a book. Books yeah. are maps. Mm -hmm. So that one you can really see because the, the yeah. river behind it, you can see coming through. Um, books are plans. I'm holding it the wrong way. Books oh yeah. No, plans. I can see it. Yeah. And then books are processes. Mm. And the very last page of that one is have your book and eat it too. So like a little <laughs> piece of cake with a cherry on top. <laughs> That's cute. So this is sort of my own like love letter to book arts and to book making. And so that's why I love this book so much. And it, you can yeah. open up these uh, mm. folded pieces. Oh, wow. Making. Yeah. So huh. I'll read through wow. this one. Books are architecture. And so it says the cover is the door. Yeah. And then it says um, inside, it says the pages are the walls. And then it says a book is an architectural space where you can wander about looking back and forth all around in and out opening and closing doors. It's your room hmm. steps. This is steps to take physical and visual transitions. Wow. And then in the back, it says the spine is the foundation. Wow. So this That's is amazing. exits. Yeah. So it's, you know, every, it's like doing something like this. This is why I feel like teaching online is hard because it's such a tactile mm -hmm. format. A book is to, you're supposed to read it like the, you know, your face yes. and your eyes with this thing. And so it's yeah. as much as I, I love the, I love being able to share things. It's a little <laughs> frustrating to not be able to hold that, you know? Gotcha. So was that an addition to, it is an addition and there's 50 of those. Wow. That's a labor of love. 50 of those. Good grief. Right. Because that includes the clamshell. This yeah. part, the clamshell. Yeah. So I'm still actually making these. I'm really, I, well, because I had done them at uh, Ringling college and the edition wasn't ever completed. And so I'm mm. finishing the edition. Wow. Yeah. That's gorgeous. That really is. Thanks. I, I love wow. this book. Yeah. 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 It's like, like you say, it's your love letter to book arts. Hmm. It really is. <laughs> and I yeah. still think about that book because I really think about those things and about mm. those topics. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. You've, yeah. I'm just in the comments now. 
Paula says additions are like having your book and eating it too. <laughs> That's funny. Right. And um, more than one. quite a few quite a few people have saying actually in the comments that they struggle with knowing what the content what content to put inside their book. So I th I think you've really inspired some maybe think about what they want to say first and then construct yeah. the book around rather than the other way around. So hmm. Interesting. Oh right, yeah. What's um so Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just thinking about that idea about uh, having the content and before you start a book. And I don't know if that's what I do, oh. to oh. be honest. I, I, I don't know that that's how it works every time. So I wouldn't say limit yourself and that's how it has to be. It does, you know, you can kind of do two things at once because I have absolutely thought I mm. want to make a movable book and I'm going to, whatever I make, I'm going to try to make that content work with that. Sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes mm. you might go, oh, this isn't the right mm. thing. So when I started that book that I've done recently, The Rule of Thumb, um, mm. I did want to make a movable book, but I was thinking about something else before I came up with this rule yeah. of thumb idea and the thumbs up and thumbs down. I was doing something yeah. else and it was about politics and about the characters of politics as these like amoeba morphed. I don't even know. It, it just was weird. And so it wasn't solid. But then when I, so I was mm -hmm. working, I was already working on the book and then I changed it mm -hmm. into this other thing about social media. Mm -hmm. um, so, so essentially you're open, like you kind of go yeah. down one path, but you've got to be willing to maybe shift and just, yeah, absolutely. Well, to us a little, a little bit about so you're making these additions and when I look at your resume you are in dozens upon dozens of uh, private and public collections a lot of public collections like mm -hmm. is that something that early on in your career you decided you really wanted and something you pursued or did people come to you or has this sort of been a more recent thing can you talk to us a little bit about that evolution Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, so I went to graduate school in book arts. And like I said mm. before that, well, not right before that, but a few years before that, I didn't know book arts was something that you could pursue. I didn't know that was a thing. Mm. And so while I was in graduate school, a bookseller, a, a person who represents book artists came to mm. our class and, you know, sounds like high school <laughs> or whatever, but it, and it kind of was, I guess, but it was graduate school, came mm. to our class and showed us all of this work that he represents for other artists. And so he, hmm. this person represents all kinds of book artists, all different hmm. styles and whatever. And, and so he goes around the country and goes to universities and goes to book fairs and represents huh. artists. So that's how that huh. happened. It wasn't really something I didn't even know that was, again, I didn't know that was a thing. So hmm. it's, it's, you know, like a gallery, right. Might represent a painter. I think that's yeah. how they work. Um, yeah. But this is the same type of thing. But they actually have to go out and like have a van full of books and unload that stuff and show the librarians. And yeah, that's how oh. I sell work. Well, and once your name like kind of gets established, you can, people know yeah. that your work's coming and so they want to collect your work. Oh, that's really interesting. So it's like a book agent. It's like a, a, a literary agent, but for your artist books. Oh, it's probably, oh. yeah, that probably is a good comparison. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so interesting. So I was talking yeah. to um, Helen Hebert yesterday. Oh, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think you know Helen. She well, talked um, on and off for a number of years, you know, of, and more over the pandemic. And um, she was just saying how her book art, her artist book sales completely plummeted during um, the pandemic. And, you know, she was hoping oh, yeah. for it to pick up again. Is that the same for you? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, it really has yeah. because no one's been open. You know, it's only this yeah. fall really that universities have opened back up again. And I'm not sure yeah. that all booksellers are actually going to play to show work yet. Mm. I think people are doing it online. Yeah. Um, and like you just saw, that's very mm. hard to do. It's hard to understand the book from, you know, mm. a, yeah. a video. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So hopefully it will pick so back up. And I do think book fairs and things are going to start back up again. And so it should get better. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. I really hope. Yeah. Because I'm, yeah. 
you know, Helen was saying it's a bit, it was a big sort of income stream for her. Now it's suddenly it's gone. So, you know, we've, that's right. kind of the route our conversation is going. But um, mm -hmm. so what advice would you give to someone who's really just starting out in book arts? Would you, um, and they want to kind of explore getting their work into a collection, would you suggest reaching mm -hmm. out to one of these agents, as it was, these bookers, um, rather than um, different institutions? I think that's hard to do. I think that mm. reaching out to an agent would probably be the better way to do it first mm. is to try to make an mm -hmm. appointment and to show them even virtually, if you could show them mm. their, your work, I think, mm -hmm. and probably to have like three or four things to show that you have yeah. in an addition. I mean, I guess people mm. sell one of a kind things. I think that's harder to do because they're more, way more expensive than an addition work would be because they're oh, just one of gotcha. them. Right. Fair enough. Um, yeah. yeah. But mm, I also okay. highly recommend going to paper and book intensive or mm. Penland. If you yeah. aren't, if you can't go get an MFA in the thing, I know mm -hmm. a lot of book artists who have learned most of what they know from yep. uh, established book art people at Penland at PBI. PBI is fantastic because you yeah. can take like three classes in two and a half weeks. Right. So it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Okay. That's good advice. Thank you. Yeah. And what, what is next for you? Like, what are your, you know, what are you looking forward to? I, I'm, I'm trying not to say post pandemic because that's, I, I don't want to jinx anything, but like, what are you, what are you working on right now? What are you excited about? You know, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I've like, I definitely that to hear Helen, that Helen was talking about that kind of like, wow, okay, I haven't sold anything in a year and a half. I, you know, that I haven't really thought about it in those terms. But that is, it's a very disappointing feeling. And it makes you feel like, is it ever going to get better? Mm. Um, so I, over the pandemic myself, I've actually taken a lot of workshops with other book arts people. And like, I recently took a tool making workshop with Jeff oh, yeah. Peachy. Yeah, which I loved. I mean, I'm not going to become a tool maker. I, I don't need to because he already does it so well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that, yeah, but it was fun to do. It was really fun to do something completely different than what I do. Mm. Um, so I, I enjoyed that. And, you know, I've started, I'm actually working on making some fabric mm. pattern making with this mm. book, with the illustrated bookmaking. Really? So I've been on spoon flower. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I've actually made some fabric. Could I go grab it and show you? Yeah. I actually got my samples. Okay, hold on one yeah, second. Go ahead. Show you. Yeah, we want to see. <laughs> so it's right every, over here. Oh, cool. Um, lots of people ask what PBI is, and PBI is paper and book intensive. So it was canceled yeah. last year because of the pandemic. But just Google paper and book intensive, and um, you will yes. you'll find it. it. It'll come up in a Google search. So, so you, here's you some of my <gasps> fabric. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like your is book. That, this yeah. is the best. I'm so excited about that. <gasps> and then I made this one. Cool. This pattern is too large for this yardage. I need to reduce the pattern a little bit. So I'll open this one up so you can see it. Oh, but that's fun. The tools. Okay. So it's book arts fabric. <laughs> I know. I've never seen that. And I just thought how fun that would be to have book arts yeah. tools on fabric. So yeah, yeah, I'm kind of working on, uh, I might try to make some aprons or like little tool bags or something with that. But the pencil, I'm super, that's perfect. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Yeah, that's, yeah. There's something about a repeating pattern like that. It's kind of, yeah. I don't know, the eye is really drawn to that. That's yeah. very, very cool. You know, it's yeah. interesting sometimes, um, you know, if you solely do one thing, you know, be it book art, painting, or some kind of printmaking, sometimes just doing something completely different, like, you know, designing mm -hmm. some fabric or making yeah. some tools, that's not going to necessarily be a whole new direction for you. Sometimes you just need that, like, change of pace and to, like, use different yeah. parts of your brain. Um, I think that's true. That's that's actually a, is using something different in your brain. And, and I, you yeah. know, I also recently, you know, the Hamilton uh, Ways Goose, which is Hamilton mm. Wood Type mm -hmm. um, Museum, mm -hmm. Hamilton Wood Type Museum, has a conference every right. year, 
And that's coming up next week. This is the 5th and 6th of November. Mm -hmm. And um, as part of that, you could register for a little online workshop. And I did that on Monday evening. And it was about printing Legos. (laughs) So you can actually make (laughs) a base plate and use those little flat tiles in Lego yeah. that are completely flat. They don't have the bumps on them. They're, they're flat little thin tiles. You can put those yeah. and ink them up and print them. And so I'm going to maybe <laughs> try that. Yeah. yeah. If you well, Google Lo- Lego, Lego letterpress, I'm sure you could find some links to look <sighs> at images of that. And it's great. It's just very modular and it looks like almost yeah. like eight bit pixels, you know, cause it's, They have those little Legos now called dots that you can get Mm -hmm. at Target. They have cases like it's a good deal if you wanted to dabble (laughs) around with that. And it's even just fun. They have like um, you can make Andy Warhol's Marilyn Monroe. (laughs) Yeah, you can make it with these little dots. Yeah, so there's all kinds of kits. But you can so you ink this up with just ink and whatever colors down there. It doesn't matter because you're going to ink it flat. Sure, but you can see the little gaps between. It's just really neat. So I'm going to try very maybe cool. do some of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, Lego so that's printing. a really good example of like cross, I don't know what you would call it, cross referencing just from, you know, Legos for heaven's sake. I mean, who knew? Yeah. <laughs> like, right. Oh, wow. Yeah. That sounds fun. fun. We, we might leave it on Legos. I think we might leave it like. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> way I have been putting up your um, website. I've got your, inst- your two Instagram accounts on the screen right now. I'm going to put up mm-hmm. your website again. Um, okay. What is where is the best place for folks to find you online? Would you say to connect? Instagram with you? Crooked Letter Press because that's a public account and join that would be great to have followers there. So yeah, yeah. and then my website crookedletterpress.com. If you want to okay. see my work, if you want to look closer at and read about the content and all those things, that's on my website, crookedletterpress.com. Excellent. And I'm going to put a link in to um, the book. I've already popped it in the chat a couple of times. But I'm going to pop in the chat right now a link to where you can um, purchase Ellen's publication. I, keep, I can't quite get it right. We'll just <laughs> wonderful yeah, publication. <laughs> yeah, the big old book, <laughs> which I will be spending some time with. Um, in a, I think I'll take a week off over Thanksgiving, and I'm going to spend some time with that. So, um, cool. thank you, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be with us oh, yeah, this morning. You're it's been it's been really interesting, and um, I'm just going to check if there's any quest. I don't think there's any questions because you have just given us so much. Oh, well, there's one question actually from Janet. She says. Do you make 50 copies of the same book? Yeah, you do, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. And addition, they're all the same. They only yeah. ever live together in my studio because then they go out in the world and they live in separate mm-hmm. homes ultimately. But yeah, it's kind yeah. of fun to see 50 books all together. It's wild. Like, yeah, when do you ever see that except for a bookstore where they've been commercially produced? But yeah, yeah. it's quite the same. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I will let you get on with your day. Um, thank you so much for thank for you for inviting me to be with us. And um, everyone, go find Ellen on her website. Go look at her wonderful books. Check out her new publication and connect with her on Instagram. And um, yeah. you all have a wonderful day.